back to the channel. My name is James, the carnivore Florida man Simon. And in today's video, it's going to be a little out of this world. I'll see you guys there. What's going on, everyone? James, the carnivore Florida man Simon's coming at you here. Today is April 7th, going to day 58 of the carnivore diet. Still feeling great. Sadly, still in quarantine. Uh, yep, I think everybody knows what's going on in the world today, so let's not talk about anything like that. Um, today, I actually wanted to go on to the MeetRx, MeetRx.com website and kind of give a couple of their success stories because I know a lot of people see mine, and mine's still kind of like a slow journey because, you know, this is something that I do every single day. So, you know, really the big changes happen, like in 30 days, I lost like 30 something pounds. And then at 50 days, I was down like 70 pounds. And I don't even know what I'm at now, you know, but I mean, every morning I wake up, I, you know, don't have those weird cravings and I don't have the headaches. I don't have the pain. Uh, my depression's gone. You know, I, I feel optimistic about the world. You know, besides everything that's going on, obviously, but, you know, it's easier than it was at a time to try to think about the positive and, you know, put a positive spin on it from, you know, if anybody's watching this, and they haven't watched anything previously. Uh, when I left the military, I was diagnosed with uh, clinical depression, uh, severe anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, as you like to say. So. I mean, for a long time, it was really just an uphill battle getting out of bed and, you know, making my way. I mean, uh, when I first got out, I was completely remiss. Uh, I moved from Colorado all the way back here to Florida. And, you know, I was kind of like a hermit. You know, I didn't want to go out, didn't want to see people. I had to basically force myself back out to the world by going to the gym because I thought, you know, you know, and even there, it was still hesitant. You know, I'd have my home headphones on and like I would be around people, but I wasn't really, you know, there. I would try to just get what I had to do and be done with it. And even though I was going to the gym, you know, I was still binge eating when I got home. You know, I think I'd work out enough to God only knows what I would eat. And, you know, I just kept doing that. And then eventually one day I realized, you know, I, I need to do something. So I signed up for college classes because I knew if I went to school, um, if I didn't go to school, the government would charge me for it. So it was kind of like an incentive of forcing myself to go back out there. And yeah, um, you know, it was the slow stepping stone back into the world to become a normal person. And from the time period there to where I'm at now, I mean, it's completely different. I mean, it's still, I still have my rough days, and I still have my bad days, but it's it's much better than it has been in a long time, you know, but yeah, I hope that helps anybody that may be watching this and does suffer from mental illness. Um, I actually was honored enough to give a TED Talk uh, about my experience leaving the military and, you know, being kind of pushed back into the civilian world and just kind of, you know, being left, uh, like, you know, just being left to my own means. You know, so with that out of the way, let's get into this meet our, there we go, meetrx.com. This is a great website, especially if you're thinking about joining. Uh, again, I so wish I could sign up for this Harvard study. That'd be so incredible. Um, they are doing... Where's it here? Okay, become a member for a free month. Um, wow, there's a lot of naked dudes on here. <laughs> uh, okay. So they have coaches and they have, uh, you know, Dr. Sean Baker's on here. And they have become a coach, get a membership, the community, resources, so on and so forth. So I want to go to success stories. Uh, first one off the bat, posted on April 5th, 2020 by Meat Heels. Nick improved his hearing and lost weight on a carnivore diet. Hey, Sean and team, please consider this vision of success of my success story. 
it's probably easier to read and in better English than I want than I sent yesterday. I am 50 years old, male, living in South Africa. My name is Nick. I'm gonna butcher this. Tatalis. Tatalis. I started a journey of weight gain as a weightlifter and competitive powerlifter. When I suddenly put on more and more weight, intentionally competing at power weight at 110 kilograms as it was then and in weightlifting at 105 kilograms but as time went on i moved on i moved up to the 120 kilogram weight category because i was getting stronger put that in quotation marks in reality i was just getting fatter oh trust me i know all about that i started a lot a low carb diet in 2014 reducing from 123 kilograms to 103 kilograms over the course of a year. That's good. Intentionally, I kept my weight consistent, but over time, my weight had started to creep up. I told people I was 105 kilograms, it was closer to 108 kilograms. Did the same thing. When I told people I was 108 kilograms, when that was the bottom of my range, probably more like 110 kilograms, snacking on cheese and never getting that sanitary signal, I would often eat. I would often eat as much, I would often eat too much as at meals. I did reduce my blood pressure and medication, but never came off of that. Despite the weight loss, I still had ankle and knee joint problems. I still had tinnitus, a symptom of metabolic syndrome, which affected my adversity medications. I'm a private pilot. Wow. After watching a video, of Mohammed Peterson presenting at a carnivore conference in 2019 and because of knee and ankle plant uh, pains I thought I would give carnivore a go. I suddenly reduced vegetables but still suffered a bit from constipation when I went pure carnivore for a week and see how it went. I was eating eggs and dairy and meat. It went well so I committed for the whole month in August 2019. In September I stopped dairy and went remote only after re-watching Muhammad's presentation with liver and kidney, but mostly only steak, I started to feel much better and lost weight to the point that I was getting comments at work at how well I was looking. I started doing some limited body weight exercises for the first time in three years since I started my new business because I had the mental energy again and the physical energy. The constipation cleared up without the vegetables. The opposite was true at first, but that settled down. My knee issues and ankle problems were almost a thing of the past. I had a medication. I had a medical. I had a medical for insurance purposes. My LDCC was up in total cholesterol three seven point two mmol slash L, and the insurance wanted to load the premiums. I reduced the blood, many results to share, and did the form of uh, probiotic. I just couldn't eat five thousand calories for three days on the meat. It was so simple. It was. It was simply too much food, but total cholesterol went down to 6.5, so insurance was reduced. I also did a CAC score, which showed a zero on all, but one of the coronary arteries and a one on the one artery, which gave me a score of one. This gave me confidence that the cholesterol wasn't a factor. My cholesterol was all has always been high, even before the keto diet, and I had doctors trying to tell me, try to get me on statins. Oh. I'm so happy with the carnivore diet and recommend to people for a month. Seriously commit and see the benefits. Interesting, I never seem to grow tired of steak, and I never thought it'd be so much fun. Wow. Huh. Oh, that's crazy. Huh. Good for him. Oh, man. See, and that just goes to show you, you know, honestly, this is this is something so crazy because it's such a simple, it's such a simple idea, you know. If you just, let's see, I think about it. If you really just commit to one month, like really commit, no secret cheat days, no lying to yourself, you know, none of that, none of the whole like, oh well, you know, I did it for a week, so I can have no, really commit really give it 30 days, you know, like really just cut everything out, everything besides water and a steak and really commit to it. 
really commit to it, like really commit to 30 days, you know, set a timer or, you know, make a plan, really commit to it. You know, even if you make videos like I do, you know, like really make yourself know, you know, if you put that commitment to it, because you, you don't know. I mean, you're never going to know unless you actually try it, you know, like you can sit there and say, oh, I'll try it tomorrow. Tomorrow's always going to come and go. You can always say I have time, but do you really have time? I mean, I told myself for years I had plenty of time and, you know, I still feel like I'm cutting it to the wire. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get to my goal. You know, I don't. I don't know how long it's going to take, you know. I don't know how long, um, you know, I don't know how many days I'm going to have to work out. I don't know how many meals I'm going to have to eat or not eat or what I'm going to have to do, how many miles I'm going to have to walk, how many weights I need to pick up and put down. I don't know. But I know that I want to reach my goal. I just don't know how long it's going to take. And that unknowing knowledge cannot stop me, and it definitely cannot stop you if that's what yours is. If your goal is weight loss, God bless you, you know, good luck, because that's like the easiest thing. Longevity, on the other hand, that's something completely different, because we don't really know what the key to longevity is. You know, we don't know what the right thing to eat is, what the right thing to drink is, what are the vitamins, what are the nutrients. We don't know because the human body is so complex that people barely talk about it. You know, I mean, imagine this right now, the way I'm talking. The brain has to keep every single thing moving at once, you know? Like when was the last time you told yourself to breathe or remember to breathe or told yourself to move your finger? Your brain does it. It's the craziest thing. It's it's absolutely insane if you think about it, you know? Like we are these complex creatures that are capable of wondrous and and just – crazy things, you know? I know in this lifetime, you know, we have Eddie Hall who pulled a thousand plus pounds off the ground. We have um, a marathon runner that ran a marathon in under an hour. Never thought it'd be done. We have Bolt, you know, who sets world records after world records in speed. You know, the human body is so capable of so many things. It's so hard to think that one exact diet or one exact food or one exact drink or bite or whatever is going to be the key. It's going to be a constant, 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 constant drive to figure out what is the best thing for you. But you have to commit to it, like really commit to it to figure out. You know, even if you think of this as like an elimination diet, you eliminate everything but the bare minimum meat and water. Same thing. We our ancestors have for years and years. You know, get rid of all the get rid of everything, the sugar, the vegetables, all of it. Just try it for thirty days, and then if you don't like it, then go back to eating whatever you want. That's the cool thing about foods; they're always going to be there. All the crap, all the good, all the okay, all the maybes, it's all going to be there. You know, but. Oh, let's end it there, guys. I still plan on doing the next review of the documentary. I started it today, um, took a math test, did okay. I don't know why the camera keeps doing that. There we go. Um, did my miles in, did my workout, felt good. Uh, actually working on my portfolio for my creative writing class, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like I always say, guys, if I can do this, I know y'all can do it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.